My name is Dr. Robert Verkirk. I'm the Executive and Scientific Director of the Alliance for Natural Health. As a scientist, when you look at the issue of safety and just how safe um, food supplements are, there is no justification to argue that you need such an elaborate system of legislation that is EU-based, that is applied to all elements of, of the food supplement industry. Um, there is a, definitely a place to see some regulation to ensure that there are no cowboys that are importing particular products that may have contaminants or pesticides, harmful ingredients on them. But the scale of the regulatory onslaught that we're seeing is absolutely disproportionate to the risk that these products produce. And of course, the other thing we've got to understand is just how the system is attempting to reframe people's perception of the safety of supplements. The big studies that are conducted on synthetic nutrients that may show a problem with long-term exposure to very high doses of these products is designed to put people off food supplements. And it's a little bit like saying, well, should we look at other studies that suggest that there's a problem with um, people who consume too much alcohol, for example, and see alcohol banned, or people who consume too much simple carbohydrates and as a result of it develop obesity, so that, that should put us off food altogether. In terms of the maximum levels that are under consideration, unless the sort of models that are currently under consideration are, are changed, we might see a maximum limit for, say, beta carotene, that is the amount you find in little more than half a large carrot, and the amount of selenium, that is the amount that you find in about one third of a Brazil nut. So these are very, very low levels, and the only basis for those is, is having this extremely precautionary model that um, is not valid really for foods. Avid newspaper readers will have seen that there are quite regular articles, often headline articles, that have suggested that supplements either don't work or may be dangerous. The important thing to appreciate about these studies is that they are studies conducted using synthetic forms of vitamins and minerals that are produced by pharmaceutical companies. And the bottom line is that these studies are often completely in conflict from the epidemiological and observational studies that have shown that people who consume higher level of nutrients that can be found in healthy diets or take natural forms of, of food supplements and dietary supplements have a substantially improved um, health outcome, particularly in terms of chronic diseases like cancer risk, um, heart disease risk, osteoporosis, etc.